everybody? It's Sports Dad, and I'm back. I'm keeping you in tune with the interviews. I told you there's nobody that's giving it to you raw, especially in regards to recruiting like me. Um, I got a special guest with me today, but before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you like and share the information because this is good information. Like I said, nobody's giving it, bringing it to you this raw and giving you all of the uh, information that you need and putting it, putting it at your fingertips. As I stated before, I got a special guest with me today. Um, you know, it's kind of funny how I ran into this guy. It's true that life is a, a complete circle, you know, if you will. But, uh, you know, come to find out, I saw, you know, I, I saw him on Instagram and I was saying to myself, like, man, this guy looks really familiar. I know this guy from somewhere, you know, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. And then I finally reached out to him and, you know, we finally linked up and found out that we grew up in the same area. But I'm going to introduce him. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my dears and my sirs, my good friend, Coach Martez. Edwards is in How the building. How you doing? What's going on? What's What's up, oh, 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 sports dad, you all right, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm I'm doing real good, man. Happy to have you, and thanks for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. So I was, you know, I was just sharing sharing with the audience, like, uh, you know, you know, we kind of grew up in the same area, but you know, I really didn't really didn't know each other like that. But once I reached out to you, I'm like. Uh, you know, you told me you was from the east side of Detroit. You grew up like that, and you was at the Boys and Girls Club. I was like, that's where I know this guy from. Right. Yeah. You know, it's all a small world, you know, in Detroit. Is a, they say it's six degrees of separation, but when you're on the east side, it's probably two degrees of separation. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, but I had no I had no idea that you were, um, you know, you were into football like you were, though. Um, you know, so obviously you was into you was into it back then. Yeah, yeah, I started off playing football early, um, Eastside Cowboys, uh, and went on from playing the Eastside Cowboys uh, and played a cast tech and went on to play the little college ball at Lane College and got a quick little stint in the league, uh, free agent deal with the Chiefs. Um, then I uh, started coaching ball. I uh, started my coaching career off back at back home in, uh, at Cast Tech, and I went over from there and left Cast Tech and went to Crockett for a minute. Left yeah. Crockett. Left Crockett, went back to Cass Tech, <laughs> then left Cass Tech and got a chance in my first college bid down at Jackson State in Jackson, Mississippi. Did a little, yeah. did about three years there, had a little success. Left Jackson State, went over to Howard. Uh, right. And, uh, and then we got uh, we got snipped at Howard, you know, nature of the business. You know, the coach is not considered a coach until you get fired. So we got fired at Howard. Right. And I went back into coaching high school ball. And I've right. been a head high school coach in uh, four states, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. Uh, so I took a year off, um, pretty much last year. I had custody yeah. of, my, of my young kids, and uh, now uh, we'll be back coaching somewhere this fall. Not exactly sure where, but I got some opportunities, and uh, you know, with the grace of God, we'll we'll see how I plan out. Absolutely, and and according to to what I you know seen, you know, I kind of follow you on through your social media and whatnot. You, my friend, are in high demand. You know, I was, I was, I was tripping. I'm like, you know, I was going through your post and, and, you know, and I saw, I thought, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I saw Nick Saban uh, pull up to one of the schools that you was, you was coaching at in the helicopter, bro. Was, was my eyes deceiving me or what? No, no, that's true. That's true. Nick, <laughs> Nick's, I've, I've known Nick for years, actually. I've known Nick since I was, since I was a high school kid. And wow. I, I, I spent four years coaching high school as a head high school coach in Alabama, in Bessemer, Alabama, Bessemer City High, one of the, my most favorite uh, 10 years as a coach. But Bessemer and Tuscaloosa is probably about 30 minutes away from each other. So I got a chance to spend a lot of time down in Tuscaloosa with, with Coach Saban. And I mean, he's had a multitude of great coaches. Uh, Elaine Kiffin, I spent time with Kirby Smart, Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, wow. Just, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mike Loxley, I spent a lot of time with Mike Loxley. And, and yeah. uh, J uh, uh, J uh, Josh Gaddis, who's now at the University of Michigan OC, spent a lot of time with those guys. Tosh LaFoy, who's uh, uh, I don't even know where Tosh is now. He's with, he's with the Cleveland Browns last year. So, but anyway, um, I had a, I had some players. So, um, as a matter of fact, I have a kid that started uh, probably half the season this year as a true freshman uh, at University wow. of Alabama. So uh, when he came wow. to visit Forest Park High, Forest Park in Georgia, where I was the head coach. He landed on the practice field to come and, uh, and chop it up and spend some time with me and some time with a couple of players that we had there. And it was a great, great experience, you know. It was great for the community, great for the school to see a guy like, you know, I mean, the, the best college coach, in the, the best coach in the college football right now, to land on your practice field in a helicopter. That was pretty cool. 
I know, man. And I know that it, it, that took the players by surprise and, and also, too, probably lit a fire up under them as well, you know, to let them know that you just never know where your hard work can, you know, can lead you. And you never know who your coach is plugged in with. Yeah, that's true. And that's true. And they, they that was, I mean, that was probably the most, um, well, Kirby Smart did it, too. Kirby Smart actually came in on the health conference, too. So, wow. Um, we've had, you know, we've had, a, you know, a multitude of coaches come in and uh, some fly in a private jets, land at the local airport and, you know, drive over. But Kirby and, and Nick actually landed uh, on campus in a helicopter. So that was, I mean, it's, it's exciting for a kid. I mean, uh, I got to see, you know, guys like Nick Saban come recruit at Cash Tech when I was playing there and other guys. But nowadays with the technology and the money that's put into the game, these right. coaches can pretty much do, you know, things that, that couldn't be done 10, 15 years ago. Right. So, so talk, so since we're talking about coaching, talk about what do you think your role, I mean, well, not your role, but just a role of a coach. What is the role of a coach in regards to, um, you know, when it, when it comes down to interaction with an, with an athlete, what are, what are the, the basic roles of a coach? In actual athletes, I mean, you, it, it's, it, it ranges, you know, because you're there as a coach to really fit the needs of that kid. That kid right. may need, and I say kid very, very uh, candidly, but that young man may need a father. You know, you might have to be right. a father for so that. That young man may need a mentor. That young man may need a, a teacher. You know, right. uh, of course right. you're there to, to, to mold him physically, mentally, and, uh, and emotionally to be able to handle the game of football. But there's a lot of things that go on outside of the game that, that – and you spend more time. And I tell my, my players' parents this all the time. On an average day, your son – a daughter, your son or daughter, if you're coaching a girl, come to right. school for eight hours a day. And then they spend right. about three or three hours maybe or so at practice. That's 11 hours a day that, that he's under my supervision. When he gets home, right. he's going to take a shower, eat, right. maybe have a 15-minute conversation with their parent, and then they're off to bed. So on, on an average week, I'm spending 55 to 60, 66 hours with your child, and you may be spending 10. So you're spending so much time with a teenager – that you become, you know, you have to guide them, mold them, uh, lead them, motivate them, support them. So to say what a coach's role is, it has so many entities. It's just, it's, uh, you can't really sum it up in, in one word. Right. I, you know, and I'm glad that you hit on those points because you're absolutely right. I see it all the time, you know, especially me, you know, growing up in a, you know, single parent home, you know, you just never know what the kid needs. And, you know, and as a coach, you just got to be ready to adjust. But I asked that question because, um, you know, a, a lot of parents, you know, have, you know, and, uh, you know, they, they have this misconception is that like the, the coach, the head coach is automatically supposed to help the child in regards to recruiting. Well, I think that I think the head coach plays a huge part because just uh, he, you, it's like an interview process. Um, right. And you as a head coach, your recommendation to the college coaches means a lot. You know, I've had hundreds of kids go on to play college ball. And, you know, I've had some that mm -hmm. went on to college ball where they were, you know, they may have got that extra push because I spoke very highly of them. And and you have to right. you know, your word your word is your bond. That, that high school that college coach is going to watch the film, but he's going to want to know about that player's character, his work, right. his right. Uh, his motivation. Does he love football? Things like that. You know how well can he adjust? How well can he adapt? How, you know it, it, things that you can't necessarily see on the film. The head coach is responsible for communicating those things to those college coaches. But in addition, a coach who really wants his wants the best interest for a player, he's going to go out his way to reach out to coaches, to send film, to guide the parent and, and the things that the parent should do to help in the recruiting process. So it doesn't wow. solely fall on the head coach, but the head coach is a key element, you know, uh, in, in the recruiting process for a player. Wow. Not, 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 and not just the head coach. Let's just say the coaching staff in general, because sometimes, you know, you may have a team with six or seven college prospects on any given year, and sometimes more, you know, you, you, I've had 9, 10, 11, 12 on one team. As a head coach, you can't do everything for each one of those players in the, in the game of recruiting in the timelines and the confines that it's done. So you have to pass that and delegate some of those things to willing assistant coaches as well. A lot of my players have made it to college with the hard work and dedication of assistant coaches as well. Wow. That's that's deep. That's deep. I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so like, but how, how does a coach, 
get connected like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, because, you know, not everybody, not all, not all the coaches, you know, are, are, have or went out of their way to make sure and build relationships with, you know, with a lot of college coaches like that, you know, and they don't necessarily have that, that, you know, that plug, if you will, for lack of a better word. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's like anything else in life. Some, you know, Jay Z is a he's a better rapper than some other rappers. I mean, Beyonce is wow. a better singer than some other singers. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, to to say, you know, East Coast should have the passion and the desire to help a kid, to help a young man the best way they can. So, whatever it is they have to do to build those relationships, they should do it. But just like any, like I said, any other profession, some some each rapper wants to have a platinum album. Each rap, each rapper wants to sell a million records. Uh, yeah. You know. Each business, each person who owns a business wants to have a profitable, profitable business, and some businesses are going to make more money than others. So, so it matters. You, you have to find your niche, find your way to to uh, make you make you know to, to to I guess mold your craft and become who you have to be. Uh, and one of the things that I stand on, you know, college coaches respect me because they know when they come to me uh, mm -hmm. about a player, or if I come to them with, with a player, they know that they're going to get the truth. You know, yeah. uh, if you're honest with, with coaches, they know at the end of the day, I know what I'm getting from Coach Edwards. I know what type of player I'm going to get because he's going to, you know, let me know what I'm getting. But also, it's how you run your program. One of my great mentors, I, and I call him a mentor. He calls me like a brother. He was actually my high school head coach, Thomas Wiltshire over at Cass Tech. I mean, if, if, if you know, Wiltshire's, Wiltshire, I learned it from him. You know, I learned I learned a lot of it from him. And uh, Wow. And guy rest his soul, Charleston Fobbs, who was my defensive coordinator uh, at Cass. He passed away uh, about six years ago, but he spent ample years at Cass. And he, I learned, you know, a lot of things from him in the, in the, in the game of uh, being a good coach and, and helping your kids and recruiting. But at the end of the day, it boils down to you loving your players and you doing what's best for those players. And you just doing it with integrity and, 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 and with passion. And if you do those things, you know, Coaches, and I'm not the only coach in this country, of course, that can make phone calls. It's several right there in, in my hometown of Detroit. You know, you, you know Rod Oden's over there. And, uh, well, he's at Harper Woods, and I spend a lot of time in East English. Um, you know, it's just the way you network, connect, and be and be honest, and then the way you run your program. Because right, the way you run your program, when a college coach comes, he knows what this type of player. You know how he's learned, how he's taught. You know the the discipline that this player should have because he's coming from your program. And those college coaches know when you get a player from Coach Edwards, he's going to be on time. He's going to be accountable. He's going to be disciplined. He's going to work hard. He's going to give you his all. He's going to more than likely love football. So that it goes hand in hand. So how you are as a person and how you run your program. Wow, man, uh, it's it's. I I thought it was. Uh, you know, uh, you you hit on your your mentors and things like that, and and put yourself in a position. Um, to kind of glean from those guys and then you took it and ran with it and, and took it to the next level now you you helping a, a lot of kids that succeed and get on you know um you know uh get to the next level i i see like i said i follow you on instagram and i see you in um a lot of a lot of your posts taking pictures with you know your former players who you know who are playing at the next level d1 or you, you even had some that was you know in the nfl draft you know um talk a little bit about that um, you know, I just had, um, well, this year, well, it was only one this year. Um, yeah. Darrell Williams, he actually, we thought he was going to be an earlier round draft pick, and somehow he fell in the draft. He actually fell to free agency, but he was the top free agent in all of the country. He had, a, to wow. my knowledge, uh, he got the best free agent deal, and he signed with the Super Bowl champs, Kansas City Chiefs, so he's in a great situation. He was an All-American uh, center in high school, All-American in college at Mississippi State, team captain. Great football player. He's going to have a great a long-standing career, I believe, in the NFL. That's just that's just one from this year. But we've had I've had you know forces to to coach several. You know, Damon Webb from Cash Tech, and uh, one of most notably uh, Brandon Graham, a Super Bowl champion, big time, yeah. big play he made a few years ago in the Super Bowl. I was actually Brandon's position coach at Crockett when he was in high school. And, and I mean, the list can go on and on. Uh, and, wow. and what's what what I value the most, you know. You can only get every so often you get a, a kid that's talented enough to play, you know, major college football, and, and even less often you get a chance to get a, a player to play professional football. But what I, right. you know, what when in my program I pride myself on making sure that my players can be professional or something. So just as I as just as happy as I am to see a kid get drafted in the NFL, I'm happy to see him pass his bar exam and become a lawyer. You know, just right. as happy as I am to see one, you know, sign 
uh, you know, sign sign with Alabama or sign with LSU. I'm happy to see them sign their contract to you know be a police officer or a sheriff or a dentist or an architect or engineers. I'm, I mean, we had them all. A, a player just of mine graduated a year ago from the Naval Academy. I mean, just the thought of uh, you know a kid coming from a low uh, in a social economic background to the places I've coached, coach low income, single parent home, and the boy got a degree from in, in mechanical engineering from from the Naval Academy. So that's professional. Wow. So. Yeah. So it's, 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 all, it's, it's bigger than just what you can do on the field. It's, it's how you can take what you can do on the field to breed the success for you in life. I like I like how you put that, breaking it down like that. Not just a, a football situation, but, hey, we'd we'll love to see them play at the next level. But I'm going to celebrate you with, with any type of victory that you have in your life. That, that, that's dope. Absolutely. And, and where we come from, you know, it, it, stemming from, from, from Olden and, and Wiltshire, Curve Blackwell, a good friend of mine who wants to sign my somebody. We uh, – Coach Correll, who out out at uh, at Belleville, we are you know we've been been tied together in in Detroit, and I have a cohort of guys in the South as well that we work very well with. Amad Tikar in Georgia, and Rod Carson in in Alabama. We just and I'm just throwing names out of guys, but you, you keep your relationships with your other coaches. I mean, but we all have a mindset that we don't you know look at. And I remember uh, interviewing for a, a coaching job one time. The principal told me, "Well, I want some guys. I want some D1 scholarships coming here." And I told her right then and there, I said, you know what, man? <laughs> this might not be the job for me. I may not be the coach for you. And she said, why is that? You know, we, we, we want to have you here. And I said, listen, I don't believe in, in preaching kids to get a D1 scholarship. I believe in my kids going D free, going right. to school for the free. <laughs> so whether they got to go to NAIA, D2, you know, 1AA, BCS, Group of Five, as long as the free. At the end of the day, if I can get a, a young man to graduate college debt free, because yes, they went sir. to school for the free. I don't care yes. if it's D1 or D2. <laughs> oh. And uh, she still offered me the job, but I just, you know, the perception. Everybody thinks you got right. to D1. D1. We've had, I've had kids go to the NFL from not D1 schools or not BCS schools. But they also, been so many of them have went professional or something else from those schools. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I did a video at some point um, on my on my channel talking about, you know, how sometimes we put a lot of, you know, care and effort into going D1. I want to go D1. I want to get D1. And, you know, we forget about the D2 schools, but I understand that that's still a good platform to branch from as well. At the end of the day, it's, it's a free education. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, it, it's few and far between of guys that's going to make it to the NFL. But you right. can be, like I said, to make it to play in the pros. You can be professional or something. There's a lot of guys who played in the NFL and some people, some of my players who have went into professional things outside of the, the you know, athletics, and they've made more money than the guys in the NFL. Wow. And, and, and it's possible. It's, it's money out here. It's money out here in jobs and careers that we typically don't know about coming from the, from the east side where we came from and where some of our players come from. We don't realize that you can go and, 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 and get paid $400,000 to $500,000 to, to be vice presidents and and directors in certain corporations, and those four, that's four hundred and five thousand you can get for 15, 20, 25 years. Whereas you go into the NFL and you're getting two, three, four hundred thousand for four or five years. Right. I, you know, I, it's okay to get five hundred thousand for twenty five years. You know, and when we right. think about NFL, we think everybody in the NFL is making millions of dollars. That's not true. That's not. Look, that's look, not true. Look, look, look at that roster. If some people yeah. go in and make a, a couple hundred thousand, and after them taxes and your agent fees and your lawyer fees. Yes, your, your security hits you. You living, you know, like you working in the plant sometimes. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a. That's a harsh reality because you know a lot of guys do think that you know the dudes are making a, a lot of money, which is why a lot of times when guys retire, you know, you know they re, they retire with you know with without having you know any money because of that false perception or whatever the case is. But um, but I'm glad you brought that up. But here here's here's what I want, and here's probably what you know what everybody else want too. You've you've been great in giving us uh you know your experiences and, and information. But here's the last the last question, or or maybe I'm lying. I don't know. This seems dependent upon where we going from here <laughs> what is the secret sauce to get a coach's attention to be recruited from a player perspective perspective because you have a lot of players you know I've, I've been going to you know camps because my boy's been going through the process and too and I and I look at these guys and I see like how serious they they want it how bad they want it and things like that but you know but I feel like you know some of them may have been missing something so what uh areas 
uh, a focus should they be really, really um, keyed in on to ensure that they get a look, uh, uh, honest look and putting themselves in, in a position um, for an honest chance to be recruited, whether it be D1 or D2 or, you know, NAIA or whatever? Well, that, that's a loaded question. So, you, of course, right. you will make your last question a loaded question, see? <laughs> but uh, um, one of the first things is, of course, I, um, making sure that they're, they're prepared academically. I mean, we know test scores, GPA, that goes without saying nowadays. We got to understand that you, gotta, you have to have that in order for school. I don't care how good of a player you are. If you don't have what the NCAA says you're supposed to have, right. Nick Saber can, can, can give you any kind of scholarship. But the right. next thing, um, one of the biggest things I would say is, is, is being consistent. See, mm-hmm. a, a lot of these players, they're, they're inconsistent. Not, and not our consistent. I'm not going to talk about what players aren't doing, but having consistency is, 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 is the key. Um, right. The next thing is uh, being at a program that is going to allow you to flourish, I guess, and show your talents. You know, sometimes you have – and as a high school coach, I, I've been forced to do it too. You play guys out of position, and mm-hmm. you got a guy that's, that's, that's you know he's he's six foot two ten playing defense and end. But this kid, really a six foot two ten kid, is a D one double A linebacker it, at best. You know, so right. sometimes you want to try to put yourself in the best position. So if you are playing out of position, you have to go to the camps, you have to visit these places and play at your position, and and be and do well enough at your out of position that the coaches can can estimate or, or guesstimate per se that you can play in another position and play for wow. them. Um, but that's good insight. That's good. But well, one of the one, and, and this is the most important one of them all. Everybody's not going to play at Michigan. Everybody's not going to play at Ohio State. Everybody's not going to play at University of Alabama. Knowing where you stand athletically, your size, what you do. Um, you know, if you, are, if you are five, you know, you are five, 10, 205-pound linebacker, you might not get a shot at Michigan. You might want to focus on, hey, will Morgan State take me or will Howard take me or maybe will right. Eastern Michigan take me? Now, right. you know, if you are, you know, a 6'6", 245-pound defense end, then you are on target to play at the BCS because of the numbers game plays a lot. So knowing where you are, you know, if you're, if you're not a Michigan player, stop going to Michigan camp thinking that Michigan coaches are going to give you some attention. They're not. Take, wow. your, butt out, take your butt down there to, to Wayne State's camp. Yeah. Go to Nor- Northwood's camp. Or go down to yep. Finley, Ohio's camp and, 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 and show your stuff there so that way you can be noticed. Um, the other thing, too, is, you know, I said being consistent, being persistent. Get your film out. Get on the Internet. Send it. These All these coaches have Instagrams. All these coaches have Twitter. You know, what coach in Maryland may like you, but the coach in Iowa may, may not. But if you don't shoot a show shot, at Maryland and Iowa and at Iowa State and at Indiana, yeah. you, you don't have a shot, you know. So yeah, you have to know, yeah. know, know where you stand, talk with your coach and say, Coach, what level do you think I can play on? Most of your high school coaches will be honest with you and say, Coach, hey, hey son, you, you're a D2 football player. You know, you, you're a one double football player at best. And, you know, and start aiming for those things. But you do have those players that miss, that are missed in between. They're missed in recruiting. Unlike your son, I mean, I watched them play. I mean, I know, I think both of them signed with Wayne State or one of them did, I know. And both I, of them did, yeah. And, yeah, both of them did. And, and, and me, me totally honestly, I think that those those guys um, can probably play at a one double A or B, or a group of five conference, and, and maybe even you know, don't I don't know what the the sky's the limit. Wayne State got two great players. Wayne, Wayne State just they just stole they stole out the kitty now. I'm gonna tell you now, they, <laughs> them, 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 them get, getting your boys. They they they're stealing. They're they're, they're not supposed to get it there, but sometimes you know God will put you in certain places for certain reasons. Right. You're right. You're absolutely right, man. And I I, pre- I appreciate you saying that, you know, and, um, you know, and I appreciate you taking time out to, you know, you take a peek at my boys, too, because, I, you know, I've reached out to you uh, for counsel or whatnot. And, and you've definitely gave given me some some great advice because, you know, I was one of those parents that, that didn't know, you know, what to expect. And, uh, you know, we got started late in the recruiting process. You know, um, we started hitting the camps and things like that when my son was actually when they were going into their senior year. And that was too late, you know, because it's my understanding, too, that a lot of colleges, they offer, you know, um, their guys, you know, early uh, for, you know, for different classes or whatnot early. And, you know, and they give out the offers or whatnot. So, you know, it's it's just a, you know, interesting dynamic. But, you know, but I'm happy where they landed. You know, they happy. And, uh, you know, I think it's a good platform for them. And, um, you know, so we'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens. But. 
end of the day, I go back to my same term, the free. D free. <laughs> D free. <laughs> but for, trust and believe, I, I, I'll be on, you know, if I get a chance to catch a Wednesday game or if I get a chance to, you know, Google it and read on it, I know I know that they are going to tear that conference up. They're going to be great <laughs> ball players. Yeah, I, 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 you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's going to be a great situation for those guys. And, and, and then, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes, you know. They, yeah. I don't necessarily say you started late. I think you started at the time that, that you know that the, the great good Lord wanted you to start because they he wanted he you know their their paths are written we just don't know they just yeah. got to keep you know you know they got to keep their nose down and, and follow the path and they'll be great they'll be some great ball players and great students and they'll be professional in something whether it's professional in football or professional in whatever profession they choose to be. I receive I receive that man you talking you talking real good coach hey man it, it's it's hard because you know you making it hard for me to let you go you know I got I got I got two I got two bonus questions and I promise you I'm gonna get you out of here the first question the question is is that because I noticed that this question has been surface surfacing a lot you know too on you know um, I've been seeing it on ESPN with the NCAA you know um, and you know about them you know paying the players and things like that um, what do, what do you think about that? Um, I'm for it. I, I believe they should get some type of compensation. Uh, right. My big, my biggest question is how do you, um, how do you manage it? How do you decipher? Right. It? How do you, you know, how it, it has to be a structure. You know, what is, what is going to be the standard operating procedure to do it? Uh, of course, I would have I have a million questions in the minds of that. But just to right. ask the question in general, yes, they should get paid for some version of their likeness. And that's yeah. who they are. If they were not playing college football and they were out, you know selling lemonade they would get paid for selling lemonade you know yeah. so because they're getting the education that kid yeah. is getting the kid is getting a free academic education he's still yeah. gonna make money somehow so why shouldn't i why shouldn't the kid who's getting the free athletic education be able to get paid for his liking liking it's a Absolutely. lot of money it's a lot of money being made i'm not necessarily saying that it should be a profession to be in the college of boy but they should they should get rich but that should be taken care of well enough to where Hey, you know, and I've been in situations and I've had players who call me and said, you know, I've known, I've had players who mom has been ill and they didn't have money to get home. Or, yeah. I've, you know, I've had players who call me and say, hey, coach, you know, I, I just need this and need that. My cell phone's going to be off. Can you help me out? Of course, I've done it. But I don't think any for anybody who's playing football on Saturday night in front of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100,000 people <laughs> should have to worry about if their <laughs> cell phone bill can be paid. The amount of money has been made off of them. So, right, right, yeah. I, I, I you know, I, I definitely agree with you one hundred percent. You know, it is a lot of situations where, you know, my only concern is that you know I've I've been watching a lot of documentaries and you know guys go to college, you know, they get hurt and in the in the and their careers end it. You know what I'm saying? And they can't do anything. You know, and they don't have anything to show for it. You know, so like, um, you know, so I I I think it's I think it's a great move. You know, and I'm looking to see. You know, bigger things happen from that too. Um, last, last question. I think um, <laughs> you. La one time I reached out to you and I asked you, you know, about some advice um, about kids playing in skilled positions, and you told me you said speed is the key. Um, you, you, you talked about that. You said speed is the key, and then you said running track, right? I did. I did. Um, I think every skilled position player that's playing high school football should be on the track team. Uh, wow. it, 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 it correlates. If you go look at the, the best players in the country right now, look, I mean, it was 37, 38 wide receivers drafted, I think, this year. Wow. I'm willing to bet 85% of them were in high school track. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's just the way it is. It goes hand in hand. You know? Yeah. It's important. So, yes. Um, and, not, and, and, and and skilled athletes, or athletes, period, should be multi-sport athletes. If a kid, mm. if you got a, if you got a defensive lineman that can play basketball, he's six five and he can hoop. He should now. It may come to a point in time in his high school career that he may decide eventually to tune in on one sport. But as he grows and develops, you know, especially eighth, ninth, tenth grade, multi sport. You know, if you look at most of the first round draft picks this year, they were multi sport athletes. Whether they played baseball, basketball, ran track, or wrestled in high school, they were multi sport athletes in high school. So multi sport athletes is a must. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've been catching. Uh, you've been. What do you, you think about the Last Dance? I know you've been. I know you've been checking that out, man. With my yeah, friends. you know what? I have. And I actually, uh, man, I've, I've been so busy and tired. At some point, I fell asleep. I, I haven't even completed it, so I won't get a chance to complete it. But it's been great. I mean, you know, watching Jordan. But of course, I'm a Piston fan. Um, and I remember, you know, sitting honestly, and and when the 
they beat the the Bulls. I was at the in the in the palace at the very last row in the entire palace to where what was behind me was the concrete wall, and all I could do was <laughs> look up on the screen and see the game. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was there, man, and uh, I remember some of those times being a kid growing up. But yeah, I mean, he was a great ball. He is a great. He's a great person, great ball player. He's my fraternity brother. Mike Sci-Fi. Today we die. So I love Mike and I love what he's done. I got a chance to meet him in person and spend some time with him. Uh, once, you know, uh, well, actually twice, uh, one of my good friends, Rip Hamilton for the Pistons, was, you know, wow. was, was drafted in Washington. And, uh, you know, Washington was playing, uh, actually the Grizzlies when I was in college and I got to go to the game and actually really hang out and spend some time with Mike. It was, it was a great experience. So he's a unique person, a great person to hang out with. I'll tell you that. Yes, sir. Wow, that's that's awesome, man. Well, man, you look, look, Coach Edwards, I really appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your busy schedule and taking care of some business, big time, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll get a chance to, you know, um, hang out and connect too. You know, what I'm saying I want to kick it with you and whatnot. But I thank you for for taking the time out of your schedule and and talking to me, talking with the you know the audience today, and um, you know, definitely some some real good information that was shared. And uh, we're definitely looking to share that information and pass it along. Um, best of luck to you um, and your new endeavors, too. And we're looking to see uh, big uh, big things from you as well. Thanks a lot. See ya. I'll talk to you soon.